Welcome back. Um, you know, people will argue that if, for instance, we have to, at the state level, uh, look at the budget and reduce other sectors and increase that of education, the other sectors will suffer. What can such what, what how, sector, can, how, can, how can this how okay. can this solve this? Uh, let me let me tell you what I've been doing on the federal level, right? Um, to buttress my points and to find answers, right? I started downloading budgets from year 2000. Nobody in this country reads budget page by page, and that's the mistake we all make. They give us summary: 70% recurrent, 30% capital. Uh, uh, percentage that goes into debt servicing, percentage that goes into to non-debt, non right? All what we see is summary. So I started downloading the budget from year 2000, and I started studying them page by page, and I, then I now segmented every MDA, ministry, department, and agencies. So I now started summarizing all their expenditure, right, in the budget. There are four things, I said this last week, four things you need to look at in the budget. One, the salaries. Your salary is due you because you've worked, right? The second thing you need to look at is travels, general. Travels, general, look at local and international. The third thing you need to look at is benefits and allowances. And then the fourth thing you need to look at is training, general, local and international. When you look at all those four things, eh, the last three, then you will know where all the funds in this country. I have said this last week. In 2005, right, one of the arms of government, the legislative arm, they had about 14 billion appropriated for travels, 5.3 local, 8.6 international. And it also buttresses, I said this last week, it buttresses what Peter Obi was saying last time, that I, call, I came into government, right, the first one month I was always going to Abuja, that every week he goes to Abuja and about 30 people will line up to follow him. And it was costing the state government uh, more than 10 million naira every week. Every week until he had to stop it. He came in with the sense of a businessman, right? That our wastage, we have the money. The wastage is what is killing us. The wastage is what is killing us. And I must say this, right? It's as if the budget is, is, is crafted in a way to put money into people's pockets. Because after I found that out, I started calling, um, I called my colleagues, uh, sorry, my former classmates uh, who now work on the director levels in, 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 in Canada, government, right? I called some people in the US, in the UK. Uh, what is the percentage of government's workers' uh, benefits and allowances to their total annual take-home pay? And I was getting between 18 to 20%. But we'll go and calculate that for Nigeria, and you see if you will not drop dead. Just a quick one here. Um, Gimba asked a question. You mentioned the states. Yes. Before we went on that break, we were talking about what the federal government needs to do. But can't the state, the state have begin, to do as, especially in the area of it, can't the state do something? The states have to do the same. It's not just federal government. Between state and federal government, we, if, you, if, you, if, you, um, if, you, if you sum up all the budgets for the states and federal government in a year, right? Mm. We do not spend more than 10%. I think it's even less than 10% on education. So the states are in on it too. It has to start state, um, local government, state, and federal government. If we do not do this, I am saying it. I am ready to debate this matter in front of anybody. We're not going anywhere. We're not going anywhere. The middle class... The middle class is the highest spender, right? The rich, listen, the rich has always sent their kids to private schools. The public schools, the middle class and the poor go to the public schools, right? The moment we killed the economy was when we started allowing the middle class move their kids to private schools. Doesn't this look deliberate? I told you now that the guy that came in 1985 set up his school. The guy that came in 1999 set up his school. His vice set up his school. Go and find out those who are behind. Maybe we need to do a research on those who are behind the big schools in Nigeria. But we need to start telling ourselves the truth. There has been a rural urban migration, especially I see that uh, the, the population of Lagos is growing at about 6% because they feel and they believe that coming to Lagos will enrich them. Is that a 
a mirage. It's not a mirage. Look, Lagos is 130 billion in GDP. Lagos is, is less is 0.3 percent of Nigeria's land mass, but it's 130 billion in GDP. Controls 30 percent of Nigeria's GDP. 90 percent of trade outflow is from Lagos. So Lagos is a mini country. If Lagos was 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 a country, it would be the fifth largest economy in Africa. If Lagos was a country, I think it would be the fourth largest in per capita income in Africa. So that it makes sense, right? For everybody to come to Lagos. Lagos, uh, Lagos uh, GDP per capita is about over 7,000. While on average, Nigeria's GDP per capita is 2,177. So it makes sense. Lagos is, is a striving economy. The only place things work, right, to some extent is Lagos. But this is the danger, right? A rich man in the midst of what? Poverty is also what? Poor. He's also poor. The influx into Lagos, at some point, the, the infrastructure, the landmass, will not be able to accommodate it. We, we are projected to hit about, is it 36 million or 40 million in Lagos in the next 33 years. Where is the land? That would be a good place to rest it. Yeah. We must uh, thank you very much indeed, Roman Osegali, a business survey analyst, for opening up mm. this um, a poverty trap that you call it. The country is in a poverty trap. And that poverty trap, right, if we do not reverse the public education sector, right, we will not get out of it. Between 1981 and now, we've added 90.4 million people to poverty, despite the fact that we have an increasing GDP. Between year 2000 and 2010, economy grew at over 600%, but at the same time, 34 million people were added to poverty. Thank you so much indeed. Roman Sagale for your views. Thank you. And Sunrise Daily will be back in just a moment. Join us again.